Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Informatica World 2015. Brought to you by Informatica World. Now, here's John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live at Informatica World in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joe, my co-host, Jeff Frick. Our next guest is Marge Brea, EVP and CMO of Informatica. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much. Now, we were just joking and laughing before the camera kicked off about bring your data to the party kind of thing and, and you guys are data driven. <laughs> Digital organization. First of all, congratulations on the great show. Oh, um, thanks. We couldn't be happier. Great energy, great guests here on theCUBE, walking in the hallway. Uh, give us a quick tutorial. What's the numbers, inside the numbers, sure. what's happening here at the Cosmopolitan Hotel? You bet. So this year's our biggest show, and we're sold out for the first year ever. Um, and this is our last year at uh, the Cosmopolitan. We'll be at uh, Moscone West next year. So uh, we've been so happy with this show. Over 2,500 people, as I said. We have over 200 breakouts. We've got just folks uh, engaging all over the place. We have um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 hands-on lab sessions where people can meet experts, share tips and tricks, uh, and do all kinds of stuff. So great solution keynotes and um, lots of really good content. A lot of learning going on. Yeah. I see people in the hallways having meetings, having discussions, not in a sales pressure kind of way. Collaborative, right. good vibe. Yep. Um, is that a hallmark of you guys' community? Is that something that, that's consistent? Or is it just the show here? Or share? yeah, yeah, I think so. In fact, uh, you know, you and I were talking a little bit before the show. I think it's a hallmark of companies who have great products. I think um, when you have great products and you've got folks who put customers first, uh, you end up not having the typical, you know, grab the wallet uh, conversations. We're talking about solving real problems, and uh, it's a company that's you know humble but confident. So. You know, it's not it's not one of those you know kind of loudmouth brash companies. It's a company that just does does real things and solves really hard problems. I, I thought so. your your keynote this morning that you kicked off the whole keynote with basically showing the mobile app that enables you to connect with other people That's here right. at the show. D I mean, harmony. What a terrific <laughs> a D yeah. harmony. What a great <laughs> indication uh, of a sense of community where that was your opening. That was your opening yeah. kickoff. You want to connect with other people, we're making it easy for you. Yeah, right, absolutely. I haven't seen that at a show before, and um, I'll be either. curious to see the um, how many meetups people have as a result of it. Well, I have a feeling we're going to have to get the profiles a little bit richer and and um, do some really cool things over the year, because that could be a year-long program. You could run crowd chats in there, yeah, get some, some profile data, right, and right. Right. social networking. Absolutely. Kind of a self, yep. using data to Contextually be or relevant. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just shocking. It's just, it's just shocking. <laughs> so, so we love this, I and mean, one of the themes here inside the cube and in the event is real time and, that's right. and in the moment, it, at the edge of the network, where there's Internet of Things. That's a challenge of bringing contextual relevance into the real time you moment. Bet. Is is a, is the holy grail marketing, but it's a technical challenge, sure. and you guys are solving it. So, what's your take on that? That's something that would you agree is like a, a goal, and how do you guys? You bet. Use your own tool and get there. Yeah, so for example, uh, just a few weeks ago, about six weeks ago, we launched our new website. And we had had uh, we had not done an infrastructure upgrade in you know a few years. And uh, so we moved on to the Adobe platform. And we've got um, over 800 uh, sites on the, uh, on the website that does dy dynamic content. So whether we just know what domain you came from, whether we know what you looked at before through you know legal cookies, um, or whether we know what you've bought before, are you a customer or a prospect? Um, have you, um, you know, shown us any interest in various things? We'll go ahead and show you, um, and you can refuse it, refuse it, and then you know we'll show you some other things. And so we do that in real time on the, um, you know, on the site, and we also uh, use tons of predictive algorithms to go ahead and look at, um, you know, what would be the be next best thing for you. So we're doing that right now, today. So I got to ask you about yeah. the data-driven marketing. Omni-channel marketing has been a big thing. Sure. The Cube here, we throw all the content out there. <laughs> uh, you got Twitter out there. You got Facebook. You bet. And a lot of these environments, you can have a presence like on Facebook, but you're parasitic from a data standpoint. You always yep. got to get the data from the those little networks. Yep. Um, what are you guys looking at from a marketing standpoint? Yep. How do you take advantage of one the omni-channel? 
multi-format content marketing yep. piece of it. And what are you guys doing uh, to reach customers in all channels? Yeah, sure. So we've got, I mean, we've got a very um, channel by channel approach and we're starting to go ahead and if you will cross the streams and so the in a good way not in a bad way and so the um and so uh and, and very soon we're bringing up actually a hadoop cluster to go ahead and bring together the uh, web clicks the social data all the data that you can be like ish with as opposed to penny perfect where you would want a data warehouse or other things like that and so in marketing we'll be the first in the company to go ahead and bring that up as well we use that for sent sentiment analysis today and then uh, tomorrow it'll be for bringing all of it together for, uh, for that kind of um, EQ, IQ, if you will, in terms of what's happening on the web. How do you guys take for that, that uh, transition from knowing your customer via a transaction, whether it's a website, sure. you get a lot of predictive, into a context of a complete relationship? Yeah. That's another trend that CXOs, CMOs are really focusing in on is, okay, I got the, th some people call 360, I don't really like that term, but like, right. okay, you have a lot of interaction touch points with say, a prospect and or a customer, you got to, yeah, and they're coming from different channels, so you have to kind of cross connect. This is a, a master data problem. Oh, it is master you know. data. Um, it's a master data, and it's um, it's a master problem, quite frankly, because I mean, there's so many times you meet a customer that they could be in a number of different uniforms as well. Yeah. Um, you know, are they are they actually a partner today or a customer today? Um, are they are they a recommender? Um, you know, do they do they act as a magnet within your whole community? And so. I would say we're early on in terms of using using that kind of data to really do this. I think we're really good from a, um, a structural and from a behavioral standpoint and from uh, also context of where you come from. Yeah. Example, we're using, uh, we're using uh, Lattice Engines actually to go ahead and uh, do predictive scoring across 450 different uh, attributes. How complicated is your website? How, um, you know, what industry are you in? Do you use salesforce.com? How big is your company? Are you hiring IT people? All kinds of things that would be things that you would normally not expect to be scoring or you know doing data, if yeah, you will. Because Lattice around. gets external signals Bingo, and from brings their cloud. that from to you guys. You bet. Blends in with your data set. You bet. So today it's not enough uh, to have a site that merely knows just what your customer has done with you. It's also important to understand the context and yeah. the engagement of the customer here. Herself. So, <laughs> Did I say that right? Top of near and dear to our hearts, in my, yeah. my heart at least, is that yeah. you know, I love to bash on email marketing because it's, it's the old ways, but I mean, people still use email. It's still effective, it's though. Still effect yeah. It's still effective, but right. I mean, it's still there now, and it's like yeah. a system of record, if you will. But no one's really engaging with email. The engagement piece is really the you holy bet. grail. So you you're out there out on Twitter on the front lines, or out tweeting, mobile phones, native apps. So if you say email marketing is the old way, which I'll just say for a moment it is, it's okay. a system of record. Right. What's the new way? What is the new way to engage uh, as a marketer? Because you know you got yeah. paid, owned, and earned media kind of coming together. This right. new intersection is this new tapped ground where yep. the engagement lives and it's hard to win the audience, right? So as a marketer, what are some of the things that you're thinking about that? What's your vision around content marketing, new ways to engage? You bet, you bet. So a couple things, I'm also on the board of Jive Software. And so, you know, cl collaboration, gamification um, for both external communities as well as internal communities. Obviously communities are the way to go and it's a matter of earned or owned. And uh, obviously the earned, I think, are probably in, um, in Maybe a marketeer's not so normal way, it's the more important one. Because folks are freer to say what they think. Yeah. Um, I think there's more credibility associated with what they say because folks are like, oh, this isn't yeah. you know, just somebody acting politically correct or anything right, like right. that. And so I think the magic is how do, you, um, how, do you have, how do you offer people a safe community to share practices that they're not really that into Going yeah. all out in the in the um, in the real world, but also have them engage with the real world um, in ways that they can voice yeah. their opinion um, in a neutral way or not so neutral way, and and all of that. So that's what we're working on right now. And what are you measuring for for your engagement? You talked yeah. about your data driven marketing. You have more data than anybody <laughs> in the company. So we talk about engagement. That was actually yeah. a big topic yeah. of the ROI, keynote. Yeah. How are you actually, what are some of the things that you like to measure? And then the second mm -hmm. piece of the question is everybody always wants to tie it back to leads. That's why they want the email. I got to tie it back to my CRM system that only has leads in it. Well, what are some of the ways that you are demonstrating right. value? If it is if it is leads, great. Or if it's not, other ways to say, hey, this is good stuff. Well, quite frankly, um, if you look at our scoring um, in terms of what we route uh, leads on, 
uh, it's not necessarily just on uh, on emails at all. In, in fact, the scoring engine uh, uses how many times you've you've answered an email or opened an email is just one of the attributes. And it's yeah. not the it's highlight, a signal. most highlight. It's a signal, it's, it's all, one right? Signal. It just shows interest. Yeah. And it's really about behavior. In fact, we've thrown out, believe it or not, any kind of um, segmentation associated with the title. We don't segment on title anymore. It's all behavior. So have you been, uh, what have you been doing on the website? What have you contributed from a social standpoint? Uh, sure, what have you opened? Um, have you participated in a webcast? Um, all of the things that, you know, do you speak at this show? Um, and, and did you tweet while you're at the show? Right. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. all of those kinds of things that would indicate that you're a vibrant member of the community, not, you know, not just um, taking white paper that you might give to a friend. We could do a whole cube mm -hmm. day on, on your topic. It's so much fun. It would be fun. Because yeah. yeah. this brings up a lot of stuff yeah. I wanted, that I'm into, which is clickstream data the old way, sure. which is legacy, still around, system yeah. of record. We want all that clickstream data. First party data, I'm OAuthing in with Twitter. Yeah. I'm engaging as individually in a right. hyper targeted conversation. Um, measurable. You bet. Uh, very high signal. Targeted. targeted. Very targeted. Super yeah. hyper targeted. Right. With and my you're right. Peer high group. signal, low noise, right? If my yeah. peer group captured that active right. data, this brings right. up active data. Active yeah. data in the new world is very valuable. Um, and we see that in some of the conversations you guys are having here, which is passive data, monitoring, right. listening, right. listening engines are out there, but active data well, is really. A active data, I mean, when you think about it, it kind of comes full circle. Remember, um, I'm old enough to remember when direct marketing actually was one-to-one -one marketing. <laughs> Literally, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, it was over the phone, flyer, right? a <laughs> phone, it was uh, directly, it was, you know, a snail mail, it was yeah. all of that sort of stuff, I right? And I think we're coming, intern. we're coming back to that whole thing in terms of power of power of one on one is that active data and um, and it's great if it's a if it's a small group of people i mean it's better if it's one to one great if it's a small group of people and even better if it goes viral and so yeah. there's i think there's a um, concentric circle yeah. that kind of right. um, that kind of is a wave if you will in terms of how things go. Okay, so back to the next step on the active thing is, okay, sure. I love this whole influencer model. Yeah, he's a big blogger, he's yeah. got a lot of followers. Let's get him easy, he must be an influencer. Good, so check the box. But the real influencers, right. when you start getting into the hyper-target in the long tail, you say to yourself, wow, in this M, um, uh, master data conversation, yep. that person's the influencer. He only tweets three times a day, or doesn't tweet at all, or once, but everyone follows him. So the new influence, so, Right. How do we get these influences? What, how do you guys look at influences and get them in actively involved? How do you create some? Well, quite frankly, our user group as well as folks that are here. And you know, I would say we've got, a, honestly, a, a long way to go on this. I mean, we're very early in terms of, it is early, you know, yeah. I mean, even, even thinking about how do you staff a marketing team, let alone a company, which it really needs to be a team effort. It can't be a, I mean, this has got to be a team sport, a yeah. marketing organization. You know, when you think about that one-to-oneness, yeah. holy cow, right? That that is a you know an always-on, always-looking, always-engaged team. And how do you do that if you? I mean, it's one thing if you're actually only watching, maybe thousands. But if you've got hundreds of thousands or millions yeah. of people, as we do in our database, you know, you're going to have to go very high signal and try to figure. You know, try to sort that out, and I don't yeah. think we're very good at that yet, frankly. So how about collaboration? So you're sure. on Devorted Jive, so you know yeah. all the data, you see all the interactions. So yeah. the own media is the website, people go mm -hmm. there to, to buy stuff, maybe ask experts, but for the most part, people don't go there first and then we'll get a cup of coffee. You bet. They go in the wild, their friends are. So yeah. the blending of the collaboration between the company yep. and the public is an interesting dynamic now in social media. It's not just promotional yep. PR buzz, you know, rah, rah. It's actual employees inside out connecting with customers. It's about a conversation. Yeah, that's yeah, an interesting. Which is very different. That's a collaborative trust you earning bet. conversation. You bet. What's, what's your vision on that as a marketer, not just for Informatica, but as a, yeah. as a senior marketer? Because that's a, that's a really active area right now. Well, I mean, think, think about what you saw in the hallways and what you were talking about here. I mean, the question is how can you have an authentic, non, you know, oh, come look at my stuff, uh, conversation, walking through, quote unquote, the hallway online. I mean, that's literally what we've got to go ahead yeah. and, um, and mimic. And that's not an easy thing to do because, you know, there's, there's gotta be trust earned in terms of where folks are at, and it starts with content. Yeah. I think, first of all, you have to earn credibility and have the right content so that people actually are knowing that you're not full of, you know, right. CRAP and, yeah and that you're not just trying to grab their wallet. And so I yeah. think it starts with content, which tends to earn trust. 
you know, then trust tends to be, you know, about are you willing to have a conversation that isn't just about yourself, right? And you're yeah. trying to engage. Authoritative and or value share. add. Share. And, you know, and, a yeah. value exchange, right? Value it's real exchange. conversations of right. value exchange. But then you also, mm -hmm. the company has to trust the community. You bet. Which I think is always an interesting paradox, especially with yeah. larger companies yeah. that have been shackled yeah. by, you know, very tightly controlled. Or a public yeah. company in this case. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, so, you know, how is that received? Do you see a changing? Um, kind of attitude about yeah. taking, you know, we will trust you so right. we can exchange in a conversation so we can really have a, a real engagement and hopefully at some point that's going to result yeah. in a sale, but that's not kind of the lead uh, outcome of this particular effort. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the thing again is about confidence on this one. So are you confident enough to engage with folks who will say something that might be, might be, you know, not on the not, sheet. You know, yeah, <laughs> something that, that you're not, just not that cool with. And, right. and to a certain extent, it's the ultimate democracy. And democracy is hard work, right? Right. And so, you know, you have to you it's have data to be governance indemnification <laughs> issue. <laughs> 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 the G word, not the it's G like, word. <laughs> these are my tweets. They represent my company. I mean, that's what exactly. people put on their Twitter handle. I mean, that's legit. I mean, people say that, but does that hold water? It's I mean, so, they still I work mean, for the company. Yeah, but then, you know, then you kind of look at that whole thing. You say, okay, how far is that going to go, right? Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady got four-game suspension for deflating footballs. I mean, anything's possible. Um, <laughs> yeah. I won't but, go there. Okay. But, but I, I, think, I think your point, a big, a big piece of it is is having the trust and the confidence actually in the company and the products that you feel good about the customer expectations so that if there's an issue, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably not the lead issue. It's not the majority of the conversation. Well, it's something that's addressable and in the right kind of tone. But not only that, I think yeah. it's it's really about actually being okay with having a hard conversation. I mean, those same people probably are having a hard time talking about sex to their kids, right? Yeah. And so, not that I didn't, but um, you know, it's a it's a, you know it's one of those things. If you if you can actually talk about what's real. And, um, we've and heard, have we've heard an that the, the sales right? have really yeah. tracked. People have said we have booked more credibility because people are, are actually seeking information with peer groups. And they want to problem solve. I mean, really, yeah. when somebody's telling you something is wrong with your product, they're asking you to put it on yeah. the backlog of product development in an agile methodology. Yeah. And, and so that's the request. Right. They're not saying solve it for me right this second. Right. They're saying work with me and at least understand my priorities and, and help me be a part of your priorities going forward. And well, they're part of the production product. Right? Yeah. They're part of Which your production. Cool. Right, right, right. They're yeah. part of production. Yeah, and and totally. I'm moving on, right? If, if they really didn't want it, they would have moved yeah. on. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have spent yeah, the time I to mean, give you, you the feedback. Yeah, I mean, if you get a bad comment, it's actually a great comment. Yeah, we're a big yeah. believer. Social yeah. data and social interaction is actually part of a production, a new model of production, whether they call it crowdsourcing. It's all about agile methodology because what it should be, I mean, we had we had done, former company five years ago, uh, we put into a project that was um, called Constellation, a um, you know feedback button. Feedback button that just basically said, okay, you can look at everything that folks have said before, and, we'll t and the dev team basically came back and said, okay, this is on the roadmap for this, or this, or this, or this. Right. And then you can say either pile on on that one, or get in line for a new one, and they tell you when they were going to put it in the, in the dev. And project. people probably came back and check on the people notification. It. Yeah, totally. it's great. Who doesn't totally. like to get their feedback exactly. listened to? Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Okay, so back to the ROI, because you like the data, is that in social, <laughs> ROI is everything. So what's your advice to other folks out there, and what are you experiencing in terms of advice for ROI? So is, Especially in social, it's so elusive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of blue sky. Okay, I can feel yeah. it. I can feel the sun working. But like when you start to get down to programmatical, operational, right marketing where more dollars get increased, you want to see some impact either top of the funnel or down for sales? Well, believe it or not, for the last two years, we've been, um, we've been measuring share of voice um, over time, in, you know, in terms of uh, social outlets versus uh, traditional media versus syndicated content, et cetera. If you look around the countries around the world, actually, social media has, in some, in some countries, most countries actually, gone over 70% of the share of voice in those countries. And so, first of all, the question is, are you a part of the conversation or are you not? If you're only dealing with traditional media in some countries, mm -hmm. and especially if you're doing traditional media and you're a U.S. company or you're doing it in English, you may be in a 3% even addressable voice market. Think about that for a wow. second, right? And so, so bottom line is, is that and what are you it spending is, on that? Yeah, <laughs> you, you have absolutely got to be thinking about how you have real people in real native language talking about real issues. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and that's like table stakes, right, to be part of the conversation. Marge, we're getting the hook here. Thanks okay. so much for your <laughs> insights and the data you share. Appreciate Great. it. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.